Never felt more like singing the blues. City win, United lose, oh City. You got me singing the blues. Welcome back to another video. Manchester City showing how it's done in an FA Cup game against the champion side. I had to do that. Championship side. I had to do it. I'm sorry. Not sorry at the same time. Hello and welcome back to another video. I want to say quickly, by the way, if you don't mind doing me a massive favour, please do and go and download One Football. It's sponsoring this video. It's supporting my channel. It's absolutely fantastic. As beautiful as a McAtee cameo. As powerful as a Liam Delap shoulder barge. As statistically useful as Guardiola. You, you get the point I'm making. Please do that. If you want to download it via the Q QR code next to my face right here. It really does help. Scan it with your phone now. Get your phone out like this and go that. Right near the finger and it'll scan. It helps support the channel loads. It's a fantastic app and it really does give you all the information that you need. And all the transfer gossip and all the contract extensions. It's beautiful. What are you waiting for? Download one football right now. Uh, get it in. Get it done. Get it done. Get it downloaded. Link in the description. Help support one of your favourite Manchester City content creators if you don't mind. I'm in a very good mood, guys. I'm in a very good mood and you should be too because City are absolutely brilliant. And also, look at that there. 60,000. Thank you so, so much. 60,000 subscribers. You're all absolutely beautiful. I could not have done it without you. Thank you so, so much. I will do some kind of celebration. Not sure what to do, but it will happen and it will be beautiful and it will involve you guys. Maybe some kind of big old live Q&A or something like that. But it's really, really... I'm buzzing, to be honest. I've been trying to get there for ages. So thank you so, so much for everyone who's made that possible. It's really, really appreciated. 60,000 is a lot of people. I'm going to go for 100k. It'd be great. It'd be great. Um... Thank you very, 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 very much. Uh, big love to Daniel, who said, massive well done, the 60k. Uh, up the blues. Up the blues, indeed. Daniel, you're a legend, mate. This shirt, by the way, I was on Man City's live show today. Did anyone catch that? I really enjoyed it. Me and David Mooney from the Bloom Bean podcast were there, and they gave us this. It, you get it from the City store. It's a 1969 FA Cup final shirt. So they gave us this to wear, and I, I absolutely love it. Um, so I've been wearing the retro shirt all day. We wore both the same one. It's not like we copied each other's outfits. But I, I love it. So you can get it on City's retro collection. Um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. But that was good, man. That was good fun. Uh, City today were strong. They were strong. They were confident against a good Fulham side. And once again, what makes this Manchester City side so good is their unwavering faith in their own abilities, their convictions their commitment to how they play football and essentially the commitment to getting the job done getting the job done and they do hello to the wife in the chat there uh the beautiful wife nicola hello nicola but manchester city today even though fulham scored an early goal even though uh they came with such confidence and tried to play football in what Guardiola would deem the right way. I don't think Guardiola would say that, actually. There's many ways to play football. What many people would deem the right way. Um, they played aggressively. They played intelligently. City still just carried on with that focus and that steely desire that we always see from this team. And I love it. And turned it around within 10 minutes. That is why we are champions. And Fulham may be a good side, but they're still not the level that Manchester City are. And I really like that. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Be it Swindon, Wickham, Fulham, Liverpool... Arsenal, whoever. Basically, I do like that this City side always take these games seriously. And that is why we do win all these trophies, man. And it's really, really good to see. I genuinely love it. I genuinely love it. It's the kind of stuff that you want, man. It really is. Um, thank you, by the way, people saying uh, uh, that you saw me today on Man City Live. I enjoyed it an awful lot. It was really good fun. Me and David tried our best to represent City fans in the best way possible. And, of course, had to do a little bit of Burton when I'm there. But uh, City today, though, um, <clears throat> excellent. <clears throat> Fulham, a side as good as Fulham with that much confidence, they'll always do something. I thought, to be honest, they're looking at their goal early on. It was just a good goal, man. Sometimes you've got to give a side a bit of credit. It was a genuinely good goal, a genuinely good finish. I was like, fair play to them, man. They moved the ball really, really well. A lovely reverse pass down inside Cancelo. And I think Cancelo could have done a slight bit better, maybe. A tiny bit better in stopping the cross coming in. But other than that, it was a perfect pass. And then another perfect pass and finished well by Cavallio, the, the soon-to-be, probably, Liverpool youngster. Soon-to-be, after Fulham, you know, refused to let him go. But either way, um, I thought uh, it was a good goal. It could have been a slightly better defensively, but it wasn't like, you know, any catastrophic mistakes or anything like that. It just happens sometimes where people, um, 
you know, people just play a couple of nice passes and it works. But all you can ever do is judge City's response. And I wasn't nervous because I think we'd started the game really well with intensity. Uh, and Phil Foden, of course, absolutely driving through the middle, causing chaos uh, in the brilliant way that Phil Foden often does, was exactly what we needed at the time. It really was really, really, really impressive. Um, a lovely finish from Phil Foden. A lovely, uh, lovely drive from Phil Foden, which, of course... Led to a half chance, but then City recycled play really well. Uh, and eventually, I think it was Mahrez that picked out Gundogan, who fired it home. And then, of course, another good corner. Another good corner. Uh, uh, Rahel, uh, there you go. I've noticed you. There you go. <laughs> I'm reading all your comments there. Uh, another good corner from Manchester City. We score from corners these days, which feels crazy. We score from set pieces anyway. Stonesy, I love a John Stones goal. I really do. He celebrates with such passion. Uh, and, and such, uh, you know, joy de vivre, a love for life and vigour. Uh, and I really love John Stones goal. Good header. And after that, of course, um, Morris took the penalty really well. We have a penalty taker. Finally, we have a penalty taker. I never thought I would see the day, but we've got another penalty taker who seems to be getting better at them. Genuinely. Uh, great run from Grealish, by the way, to create it. Dribbled past a few players. A lovely run. And of course, finally, another Kevin De Bruyne. A wonder pass. Um, I think Mahrez has been credited with a goal, but that was going wide. That definitely was going wide. Um, genuinely, it was going wide. But... If they want to give it to him, we'll take it. And then, of course, the bit that got me most excited as a Manchester City Academy, bit of a, a obsessive at times, and it used to be anyway, uh, seeing McAtee and Delap get on, ah, I love it. That is the icing on the beautiful cake, isn't it? It's not, not the icing, the cherry on the beautiful ice cake. It really was. Um, and to be honest, I, I really liked it, man. Genuinely, I really liked their cameos. I thought McAtee, look, how can anyone look at McAtee and not just see a Manchester City player. How can anyone look at McIntyre and not just see someone cut from the exact same cloth as David Silva and Bernardo Silva and, you know, previous players like Gun uh, like Nazri and then Gundogan. He has that same elegance and silkiness to his game where you know he's just not going to waste the ball. He's going to recycle possession beautifully. McIntyre, he fitted right in. Right in. And I'm so glad he got to play his attacking midfield as opposed to a striker. And he got to play his midfield as opposed to a striker because also... The absolute brute of a battering ram, uh, Liam Delap. We thought we had Mitrovic to be that person, but Liam Delap came on. He's only 18 still. How the fuck is he only 18 still? He's absolutely massive. And of course he is, because City are a massive club, obviously. Uh, he's absolutely huge. He's grown a little bit, even when he was injured. And Guardiola had some really interesting stuff to say about him, which I really enjoyed. Let me just find the quotes. Guardiola, um, let me find the quotes. He said... Uh, Let's have a look. Where are they? Uh, the first ones were really good. He said, "He said uh, Liam has grown up a lot last season. He's a type of striker we don't have. A killer. A typical British striker. He has special qualities. The only problem we had this season is he's been injured. Injury after injury because of problems with his ankles. He's a special quality. A different type of striker. He has his quality and I'm happy for him. And then he went on to say, which I really like... Um, he said, oh, he also said, if you fit in every if you fight in every training session on the lap, it will pay off in your career. You will get what you deserve. Nobody knows what will happen next season. What he has to do is work for himself and do what he's doing and be fit, be patient in the right moment with the quality he has, he will get what he deserves. And he said this, which was great. Um what did he say? I've lost it. He said, every training session against Laporte, against Ruben, against John, Nathan, he fights and most of the time wins the jewels or breaks his nose or something like that. I fucking love it, man. This like acknowledgement, acknowledgement that he's just a bastard and he battles and he gives everyone a hard time. Sometimes you need someone who's willing to come in and just ruffle some feathers and push people around a little bit. Go on, Liam, man. An old school centre forward. And I think Pep loves that, you know. I think he loves that element of chaos that he can bring and hopefully Hopefully, hopefully, they'll make it a city. Big love to Patrick. He says, that top is beautiful, Stephen. You make it look great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Congrats on the 60k. Yeah, I think the colours kind of suit me, unfortunately. I'm sorry. As, as a City fan, like I just seem to suit red. <laughs> uh, but it is a Manchester City classic, so, so I get away with it. Um, thank you very much on the 60k. Uh, yeah, I'm buzzing with the 60k, genuinely. I've been ch hunting it down for ages. It's slowed down recently because I've not been doing as many videos since October, since we got the house, so it's slowed down a lot. Finally got there. Finally got there. The road to 60k. Now it's the road to 100k. That's what I want, man. That's what I want. But yeah, the lap, uh, really exciting. Really exciting, the lap for me. Really was. Uh, that's the kind of thing you want to see, in my opinion, as a Manchester City fan. I want to see a youngster who's going to battle and battle for the ball. Of course you do. Of course you want to see it. It's everything that you want. Someone who cares that much about it. Uh, and Guardiola is, is right to enjoy that cameo. And McAtee as well. Look, you 
you got to hope that those two players do find a way into the squad. It may be difficult. It may be difficult with um, uh, with Haaland potentially or a striker maybe coming. It may be difficult with the lap, but all he can do now is I genuinely feel like if he'd been involved and available this season, not injured, he would have played a few games. I honestly believe he would have. But all he can do is try and take his chances. And he's part of the first team squad, so fair play to him. Rohan saying, Mares or Sterling, Steve? Uh, mate, big love for the super chat. Super chat. Uh, Rowan, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. Um, I don't like questions like this because I honestly believe they're such different players. And I'm not, there's nothing wrong with your question, mate, but I just don't really see a need for either or. I think just both is my honest answer. Like Sterling um, creates a very different kind of chaos who's on his right. Mares creates a very different kind of chaos too. I mean, I just want them both in my squad. And if Guardiola wants to start one over the other, my very simple judgment, and this is honestly as simple as it is, you do you, Pep. It really is. I, I guess essentially what I'm trying to say is I really trust in the quality of this squad so much that if Guardiola starts Sterling or Mahrez, I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. I don't prefer either player. I really don't. I just rate them both really highly. And I'm, I'm absolutely fine because they're both such different players. Some of you will have your faves. Some of you prefer Mahrez or Sterling or whatever. That's fine. I'm not going to say you're wrong. But honestly, my genuine feeling is I am never fussed if either start. And so I guess if Sterling starts... Great. If Mara starts, great. That is my honest opinion. So in that instance, I can only I guess I can say is that I don't really, um, I don't really care who plays. So I don't have a favourite. Honestly, that is my honest opinion. It's a bit of cop out, but it's just genuinely true. Um, I thought Grealish was good today, Robbie. I thought genuinely Grealish played really well. I thought he had a lot of drive and energy and he went at people and he was running a bit with the ball today as well. Um, I do think he's going to get there. I do think he's going to find his own style. I do think he'll become the player that we want him to be. I think I've, I really think he's got the quality. He's just going to have to be a little bit patient with Jack and he will find that rhythm. And either way, um, I thought he was good today. Genuinely good. Um, and of course, as well, guy. Let's all laugh at Man United. Look... <laughs> Look, Fulham are a better side than Middlesbrough, and we took them apart today, genuinely. Um, we really, really did. And you've got to bear in mind, you can go, oh, it's only Fulham. Fulham are going to be a Premier League team next season, and they're, they're in form, one of the best in the country right now. If they were playing most mid-table teams in the Premier League, they would probably give them a game and beat them. So Fulham are a good side for them to judge against, if that makes sense. Everyone is loving this top, aren't they? How much do I want from this shirt? Get it from Man City's site, mate. Uh, get it from Man City's site. <laughs> Uh, it's not it's not hard to get hold of. It's it's on the retro collection, I reckon. Um But yeah, I thought Fona was good as well. Um He's oh yeah, do you know what I agree with Guy. Guy said that Grealish at the moment has a tendency to shoot at people's shins. He does. He does. Hopefully he'll get there and choose a couple of times where I'm like, shoot a bit earlier, mate, or uh, take the pass a little bit more aggressively and so on. But but Sterling uh, not Sterling, sorry. <laughs> Sterling is a bit harsh. Uh Grealish has got a lot to learn, and he will get there in time. But I thought he was good. His energy was good, and he looked to cut above Fulham, and that's all you can really ask him. Um, why not love you today? Simply because we've got too many players, mate, Luca. Like, we've got too big a squad. We can't get every single player on the bench. We have to give the first team players a chance to get the rhythm up. And what I like, by the way, is I was chatting after the game, and I really, I'll really i go into this in the five things learned tomorrow. I really like the size of Man City's squad. I don't, I, it's just not too big. It isn't too big because every week if there's one injury or one player not available, they're essentially you're going to have an academy player on the bench, and I really like that. So today we had no Jesus, right? And who else? Was anyone else missing? Obviously, Fran's gone. Mendy's long suspended. But other than that, it's just Jesus, right? Just Jesus unavailable? I think that's pretty much it. And then Cole Palmer is an academy player. He's now part of the first team. But, you know, two players out. We had... Yeah, but I said I didn't include Palmer because he was an academy player and now a first team player. But... You know, I guess the point I'm making is that now it's easy for young players to get on the bench. And this is how I want it to be. I want it to be that way. And you got all the players, you got no you got no sad senior players because they're all getting game time because it's a tight-knit squad. I would rather have 17 to 18 senior players that are really highly focused and then a few academy players as opposed to a squad of 22. It just seems so lean and ready. And the young players have got that temptation as well. To me, that is exactly how it should be. Um, thoughts of McAtee potential the lap. I, I talked about him aggressively. You just missed it, mate. But I, I won't tread the same water again. But I both think they're fantastic players. And what I love about him is they bring something so unique and different to the game, both of them. People like the lap. The lap is a very different kind of footballer, but he's a powerful footballer. And that aggression, that, ah, that, that also, by the way, his goal. I know he was offside by like that much, literally that much. 
but it was still a good finish. It was still a good run. And if he just moved half a second later, he would have got the ball and he would have scored and he would have been onside. So I guess it was a slight judgment error, but that was still the kind of goal that he will score. A good finish from a proper striker. Um, and McAtee is just... Let him let him develop into Gundogan. Let him develop into Gundogan's replacement, in my personal opinion. I'm glad that McAtee got to play as a midfielder today, as opposed to just a guy, you know, uh, flitting around uh, as a false nine. I wanted to see him in midfield, uh, and that's what we got today. Um, uh, guy saying, I totally agree with the squad size. Question is that uh, the observation begs is, do we get Haaland and Alvarez? Do we get rid of someone? Possibly, mate. Po possibly. Uh, we might get rid of someone. I, I think someone might go in the summer, surprisingly. And if they do, so be it. Maybe Jay's used or something like that. But if they don't, fair. Yeah, that's it. That's how it is. Um, yeah, but I, I do like our... Like, I do genuinely like our tight-knit squad. I think it's really motivated. And in general, you get cliques in dressing rooms. If you've got 24 senior players, they'll split off into small groups of six, you know, friends or whatever, all the English lads, all the Brazilian lads, and all the Port Spanish, Portuguese speakers or whatever. But if you've got 18, it's harder for those groups to form. Everyone just hangs around together in maybe two groups instead. And so largely, you get smaller... You get more of a tight-knit group because... It's a lot easier for everyone to bond when he's 18 than there is 24. And I honestly think that's a thing. And you got you haven't got like loads of players sat in the stands doing that each week. You know, you know that face you see when you've got like Chelsea, you've got loads of players and you get someone like, I don't know, you get a senior player like uh, Pulisic just sat there, not even on the bench going like that. No one wants that. Thank you, Mason. I look peng, apparently. That's very nice of you. I feel like I do look good today, actually. I'll take that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sibel, there's your hi. Hello to Sibel. Um, Robbie's saying, I wish him all the best in becoming the number one striker and number team outside of England. Who you on about, mate? Oh, Gabby. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Gabby. Oh, Jake McAtee was great. I've talked a lot about him. And to be honest, I thought City were good. I think City were good. I thought De Bruyne pressed really hard today as well, by the way. De Bruyne was excellent. I thought Kyle Walker was ex extremely experienced. Stones did, uh, and Ake dealt with uh, Mitrovic really well. He genuinely did. Um, he was a very bulldozing powerhouse of a striker. And I thought overall, City were just good. They were very good and very, very, very impressive. Um, the lap does seem bigger, TJ. He really does, mate. He genuinely does. He's got like... He's put on a bit of... Bit of weight, but not in a bad way. He's just getting bigger. Like the lap, when the lap, when the lap's in eighteen, um, he's only like he's only young still. He turned eighteen. Oh, he turns nineteen uh, in three days actually. So he's technically he's nearly nineteen basically. So he's nineteen this week, but he's a big boy, isn't he? He really is a big boy. Uh, <laughs> he's massive, uh, and I I love it. I love that versatility. It's a bit different, but it's all very very good. Um, exactly, Patrick. Exactly, Patrick, you know, uh, the, the, the squad, when you go to them, they're all very happy and they're all having a very, very good time. Thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, who said that was it, Patrick? I've lost it. Oh, no, it was John who says, new home, new wife, 60K. What a great way to go. Yeah, working for Manchester City today, burning live on air. New home, new wife, 60K subscribers. Thank you. I'm very, 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 very happy about that. Um, he is a bloody unit, Dusty. That's the best way to say Um it is the top, Mason. It really is. But, you know, hair, point, hair cut on point. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> so I'm hoping we see a lot more of the lap and McAtee now. Um, I honestly reckon. Do you remember we've seen, like, Lavia and Wilson Esbrand and a few players uh, on... Um, on the bench this season. I think Delap would have been on the bench a lot more because we haven't got a striker. I think he would have been on the bench in place of Ferran Torres. Uh, and I honestly reckon... Um, he would have got game time because he's so different. Uh, I don't think he really needs to go to the gym at all, Xavier Tucker. He said James needs to go to the gym. We always do this. We forget they're just young and you just grow. I never went to the gym. But if you look at me now compared to when I was 19, I'm not muscly, but I'm notably broader and bigger just because you grow up. I've never been a person who exercises. So McAtee will just grow. He'll just grow and get bigger. Like Foden, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say... Um, Gundogan or Bernardo are like need to bulk up or anything like that. We only say it when they're young for some reason. But he's no smaller than those two. He just isn't. But we always presume young players need to go to the gym and work out. No, they just need to grow. That's literally it. He will work out naturally as he's part of a football team. And but these McAtee's gonna have no problems whatsoever. No problems whatsoever at all regarding um, 
He's physique. He's not. He's not too small either. He's a little bit taller than Bernardo. He's like an inch or two taller, I reckon. So he's going to be fine, McAtee. Absolutely fine. Uh, Dylan with the super chat. Thank you, Dylan, so much for the super chat. It really is genuinely appreciated. I, lo I love it every single time. It's massively appreciated. Dylan saying, right, Steve. Right, Steve. Any chance of a video of ASAN about Harlem rumors or the season so far? Yes. I'm going to set a reminder right now, um, and I'll message ASAN. Uh, and try and get. Uh, let me do that. I've been trying to catch. I've just been so busy with the house, but I emailed myself saying ASAN, and I'm sure you'll be up for it. There we go. So there we go, uh, Dylan. You what you asked, you will get. So that's how, there you go. Do a super chat, and you you get to ask what you want. <laughs> Apparently, that's how it works. Dylan, thank you so so much, mate. But yeah, I'll get it. I'll get a chat with ASAN, and we'll we'll sort something out. Uh, thank you so so much, Dylan. You legend. Um, Imagine, imagine. By the way, coming on four-one up, uh, we've just won, and someone just comments, "Sell Sterling." Like, I, I don't, I, why? Uh, I, I don't know why you would come on to do that. The detail and the candle being lit. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're a bloke and you don't like candles, I think you're doing it wrong. Candles are great. That's my genuine thing. Uh, get yourself a candle, man. Candles are. Women like candles. Everyone should like candles. That's what I will say. Candles are bloody brilliant. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, Robbie said, I'm really worried for the laugh. He isn't getting the chance to prove himself as Premier League striker. Well, that's not even... I don't think that's slightly fair. It's not that he was never getting a chance. He's been injured for six months, you know. He, he got in last year as a 17-year-old. And I think he would have played this season, but he's been injured, you know. So I feel like he would have got some game time. Um... Uh, honestly, okay, the Sterling free kick was hilarious. I'll give you that, by the way. But I think the lap would have got some game time. He might not get a chance now, but all he can do right now is just be bullish. And there will be injuries, so he will get, be on the bench again, and he will get another chance um, to play. So, honestly, um, I do think we'll see more of him. I do think we'll see more of him, hopefully. It might be that, honestly, it might be that when um, Harlan comes in, if he does come in, or Alvarez comes in, if he comes in in July that we don't get to see the lap. But for now, I'm hoping that we will. Um, everyone's loving the shirt, by the way, aren't they? They really are loving the shirt. It is very red, but let's just... City have a history of red, unfortunately. We do. Our away kit is red and black. It's an iconic kit. Um, it's a beautiful kit as well. Let's get the likes up. Yeah. Ads is right, man. Um, is that is that Star City ads? Is it? I always think it is. Uh, you need to change your name on here. Uh, let's get the likes up to over 100. Easily done. 150, I reckon. Uh, Brian dropping pure facts in the super chats. Brian, you are absolutely not wrong, man. You're absolutely not wrong. Uh, it says keep Pep for another ten years. So uh, we're so lucky to be City fans. You're absolutely right, mate. Uh, genuinely, keep him for ten. Well, keep him for as long as he wants to stay. If he wants to stay for twenty, I would give him a contract right now. If he said, "Can I stay for twenty years?" I'd be like, "Yes, absolutely, no qualms about it whatsoever." Uh, Brian, you, you're right, mate. You're absolutely right. Pep should be here as long as he wants to be. Um, nice dusty scabbard. He's got a lemon uh, thyme and Vibana double wick candle. Comes in a dish jar as well for tea lights later. Oh, dusty. Fucking stop it, man. You're talking candle porn there. <laughs> um, I like the smoke, weirdly, actually. I kind of like the smell of it. That's just my controversial opinion about candles. Um, the kit's actually inspired... AC Milan. Is that true? Or you just said that? I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know the history of this kit. Um... Yeah, the Sterling's penalty by the uh, penalties free kick was just abysmal. You gotta laugh though in those moments. You have to laugh. That's what I I just burst out laughing. But overall, this was a good day for Manchester City. Um I was really happy with that. I thought City were excellent. Uh uh we, we were professional, we were organized, we we listened and learned from our mistakes at half time from the first half. We got to see the, the senior players play really well. We got to uh you know, see some young players making a really good cameo. What's not to love about that? I'm really, really happy about it. Um, uh, does the Lightbox strike you as the kind of person that wouldn't want to wait around like Foden? I don't know, even being honest. I absolutely don't know. I think the Lap really trusts this club. He's on a long term contract. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, he seems pretty dedicated. I think Guardiola seems to like him for what he's worth. Guardiola, what? Let me just find the tweets. Um, I'll jump over to the aggregators, one second. But Guardiola really does seem to like him. Like, he, the comments were really positive on him. I think he understands that he's a little bit different, Galap. Uh, Galap? Galap. Um, and I'm all for that. I'm all for it. So let me go. I think, um, okay. He's down votes now. Has anyone else got down votes on Twitter? I have, which is really weird. Um, I can down vote people on Twitter. Hang on. Right. Here we go. I'll jump over to this screen. 
So, let me get it up over here. Let me bring in the aggregators. There we go. So, uh, here we go. He said, uh, Guardiola said on the lap, if you fight in every training session, it will pay off in your career. You'll get what you deserve. Nobody knows what will happen next season. What he has to do is work for himself. Do what he's doing and be fit. Be patient in the right moment. For the quality he has, he will get what he deserves. And he does fight in training, as Guardiola pointed out here. Where is it? Uh, he says... Uh, what did he say? He said... Sorry. Every training session against Imeric, uh, Laporte, and Duke Ruben, and John, Nathan. He fights, and most of the time he wins the jewels or breaks his nose or something like that. I love that he's admitted, basically, that he's a bit of a bulldozer, a bit of a terrier. That is exactly what you want, really, in my opinion. And he said here as well, last season, Liam grew up a lot. He's a type of striker we don't have, a killer, a typical British striker. He has special qualities. The only problem we had this season is he's been injured, injury after injury, because of the problems with his ankles. He's a special quality, a different type of striker. So I think Guardiola clearly does rate him. He clearly does rate him. Um, that's it, man. That's it. And um, I think he understands that he's got a little bit of difference about him. So we'll have to see how it goes. But either way, guys, either way, um, I really enjoyed that game today. I enjoyed being on City Life. Thank you so, so much as well uh, for getting me to 6 to gate. It's massively appreciated. Um, City are really good. I miss football as well, man. I miss football. It's good to be back here chatting about football, wasn't it? An actual game, you know, because two weeks felt a lot longer than that, didn't it? Um, that was really good fun. I will do some live video tomorrow, probably. Uh, I'll probably do the five things I learn in the morning and maybe a live, re live some kind of live fan chat tomorrow. I'm a bit too tired to do the live chat tonight, but I will. I'm getting back into the role of things still with the videos but i've enjoyed this thank you so much for watching please do and download one football go and download it right now where is it um click that's that has anyone scanned that yet has anyone actually done that so what you do you get your phone out get your camera on and you scan it like that i'm gonna try it now myself coco it works i've just tried it myself give it give it you go there we go it actually does work try it yourself uh, you're all absolutely awesome. Manchester City are awesome. Liam Delap, McAtee is awesome. 60k. Thank you so, so much. Have a wonderful evening. Come on.